cross it off. Yes. <laughs> I probably like, struggle through it. <laughs> if it makes you feel better about your job, that answer was on the back of the book. It was all, yes, it was all something. Sam did point that out to me today, which is why I know that I talked to Sam. <laughs> it was on the back of the packet. Yeah, it was on the back of the packet, too, which is kind of funny. I forgot to see that. I'm struggling with the problem. Break it. All right, let's look at this one. See if we can work this one together. What did you say? It's just telling you that it's positive. It's telling you the variance is A. Yeah, but it's, it's not telling you what it is. I know. It's rude. It's rude. It's probably going to be the case that you're not going to need to know exactly what it is. I need to know just a hunch. When? Don't be crazy. How well, I need to know what chi squared is negative. Is that what I'm doing? No. What? Oh, no. Let's see. Wait, what? Don't give up. Give no, give it up. You can't go back. Sure, you can. Still giving up now. <laughs> I think the Georgia girl is cold. <laughs> You're sitting there freezing. I can see it. Remember that you'd be giving you a hard time. I could just tell that you were cold. <laughs> No giving up. What did I just say? No, I can just give up too. Well, Michael's allowed to give up. You're not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Double standard. <laughs> That's right. Is equal to the probability that one minus probability of x squared is greater than a. I have no clue. Who has an idea? Okay, tell me what the idea is. So. The normal variance is positive, so that means we can take the square root of it for the least whole. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be x minus 0 over the square root of a. Okay. So then, in order to get, do we want to get into the degree of freedom of 1? Like, use the other theorem that says the square root of square root of 1. So you want you want to do this? Is that what you're telling me? Okay. <laughs> I guess I don't know where I'm going with this. Okay. No, the 
x minus 0 over root a, and that if we want it to be the chi square distribution, we need a square. Why do we keep saying chi? Michael, look what you did. It's called chi. No, it's not. Yes, it no, it's really not. It's chi squared. It's chi squared. No. Everybody knows it's chi squared. Okay. It, everybody in a six inch radius around you knows it's chi squared. <laughs> she said chi squared, so that's not six inches. She jacked. She jacked. Okay, thank you. I don't know where I'm going with this problem. I got the x minus 0 over 3. I didn't get that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, say again why you were doing that. Because we wanted to be standard normal. Okay. And we have normal and variable. Mm -hmm. So we made it standard. Okay. But then I guess my question is did our next step change the second theorem by squaring R D Which is that, but I don't understand the question. I agree with you that if you do a, if you do the subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation, you get a standard normal, right? That's how we do our z scores. And when you square a standard normal, what do you get? Chi squared is a one degree of freedom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why is it one? Well, I wrote less than one. Why is it one on the right hand side? Because you, if you're dividing by the square root of a or square root of a squared, then you need to divide. Yeah, I'm going to divide this side by A, which is what I've done. I've got to divide the other side by A, right? So that's a true statement, is what you're telling me. So I should write that. That is a true statement, yes. This is not how I would have attacked the problem, but this is a, this is a perfectly acceptable way to attack the problem. I don't understand how we're getting the quantity squared. I don't understand. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just working in, I've, I went like this, basically. Divide both sides by A, okay. and I'm pulling the A inside the square that's up here. Okay. So right, rewriting this like that. Okay. That's how it's going inside there. Okay. All right. This is not how I, I would have attacked the problem, and I'll show you. I'll tell you why in a second. What do I need to know now, though, for this? What it is. <clears throat> right, because this is chi squared of one degree of freedom, right? If I'm actually going to get this, I'm going to have to go to Excel to do it. Oh, go right to the Well, yeah, why not? You started this way. This is a perfectly acceptable way to start the problem. Okay. It's just a little bit harder, but that's okay. Nothing's wrong with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way. All right. <clears throat> I want the probability that that particular variable is less than one for a chi squared, right? <clears throat> So I'd have to get in here for chi squared distribution, which is that, so I just start typing chi, it comes up, right? What's our x value that we want to plug in? So remember the, what we're looking at right now is the probability that, I want that, right? So what do I want to plug in for the x? The one, this part here, right? That's what we want to plug in for the x. How many degrees of freedom? One. And do I want cumulative? Yes. yes. So we get 0.6827. Now again, one of the reasons why I would not have done this this way is because usually with the chi-squared problem, we need a table. And 0.68 is not something that pops up on the chi-squared table. Okay. There is, abs there is zero, it, zero wrong with doing it this way. It's perfectly fine. I just needed technology to be able to get the actual value. Okay? But the answer is a two point, or 0.6827 or whatever that is, which is a perfectly acceptable way to do that. So it would be, that one? Right? Let's do it a different way. Okay. So, back to the starting point. When Morgan said that A was positive so I could take the square root, I thought she was going to go this other way to start with. 
which is fine. Again, there is nothing wrong with doing it the other way. It is perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with it. The reason that it's a little bit easier, well, a little bit easier to do it this way is because we'll be able to use a different table. Okay? We know that x is normal, right? Can I get x by itself here? Yeah. And what way yeah. do you do? Take the square root, which is where I thought you were going when you said you do the square root. How do I rewrite this in terms of square root? Probability that negative root a is less than x is less than root a. Right? And then now proceed like you did before. We want to do a z score, right? Change it over to standard normal. To so change it to standard normal, what do we want to do? Divided by square root of a, right? Because it's divided, this, divided by the standard deviation, right? So you get negative 1 is less than x over square root of a is less than 1. And now this part here is standard normal, the part that I just circled, right? So how can I rewrite this using the, the CDF of the normal distribution, using the, the phi function? So if I simplify that, we get 2 phi of 1 minus 1. And now I can look this up in the normal distribution table. I don't need the technology. So if I flip over to the normal distribution table here, <clears throat> I want phi of 1, which is here, right? Kind of drove through it, this one here. That's our phi of 1. So I can go back over here. I want the point 0.8413. Forgot which problem I was doing. 8413 and minus 1. And so you get 0 0.6828, or 26, sorry. Which is what we got when we did the chi squared problem. So we got the same answer both ways. Either way works. It's just the first way required technology to get it. Are we going to have technology on the test? You'll probably have the tables on the test. <laughs> that one okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's do one more. Let's look at the 23.7 here. I'm sorry.
What is it we want to find here? Okay. Why don't you come up with that? Okay. So you must be letting x be what? Okay, so yeah, you're trying yeah, your x is your traveling time to work. Cool. Good. All right. Everybody okay with that part? What do we do now? Subtract 30 and divide by 30 and 35 on both sides. We'll use Z most of the time to, for the standard normal. So what do you get for the right hand side here? 0.8452 is that what you said? Okay. What do we want to do now? Are we okay up to this point? Are we happy with this? All right, what do we want to do now? Which, in terms of the CDF, what should this be equal to? V of the decimal, right? Z is Z is our usual notation for the standard normal. That's okay. That's one of the, they use that, and that's why we call it a Z score too, because that's what the letter they use to denote the standard normal distribution. Okay. So what do we want to do with this number? Look it up in the table, right? So if I look up 0 0.8, well, can I look up 0 0.8452 in here? No, it's 0.8, 8, 4. No. Okay. So that 0 0.8452 is somewhere in between those two numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Are you agree? Now, in most problems, you should be able to just round your z-score to two decimal places and use that one. So in this case, we would round to 0.85 and get the 0 0.8023. But if you want to be a little bit more accurate, there's another process that you can do called interpolation. So I want those two values, the 0.7995 and the 0.8023. So... We know that phi of 0 0.84 is 0.7995, and I've already forgotten what the other one was. 0 0.023. Okay. Okay. So here's how linear, what we refer to as linear interpolation. This is how linear interpolation works. Really, all you're doing is finding the equation. Just all you're doing, literally from an algebra perspective, is finding the equation of the line for these two points. This x value, this y value, this x value, this y value. Find the equation of the line between those two points and plug in this number. I mean, from algebraic, what is all you're doing? Finding the equation of the line between those two points and plugging it in. Practically, you're not going to do that every time. I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find the difference between these two things. So the difference here is what? 0 0.0028. All right. We agree with that? Okay, so if I want to do, I'm going to round this to three decimal places. I'm going to cut it right here. So I'm going to do the phi of 0 0.845. 0 0.845 is halfway in between 0 0.84 and 0 0.85, right? So this should be starting at 0.84 and then half of the difference. And this one half here is because 
is halfway between the other two values. So you get 0 0.8009. Yeah, this is the average of the two. It won't always be the average. This one just happened to be halfway in between, so that was why it was the average. That's why it's half, because you're doing you want to go half of the distance. So essentially what you've got here is this difference you're treating as your slope, but you're going halfway. Yeah, <clears throat> What if it wasn't halfway? What if it was like 0.843? Okay, um, that's a good question. What if I wanted to do 0.843 instead? What do you think I would do? <laughs> well, think about think of it from a percentage standpoint. If I go from 8.84 to 0.843, how what percentage did I go? To the next one. It's 30%, right? It's 3 tenths of the way. So I would do times 3 tenths. Oops. This is 0 0.0028. It's 3 tenths of the way to the next number. So I went, it's, think of it this way it's 3 tenths of the way to the next input. So I go 3 tenths of the way to the next output. So if I was going to round it to four decimal places, you can have it be 5.2? Then it would be 52%. Yeah, over so you, yeah, so you do 50 over 2 over 100 or just 0.52. Yeah. Yep, you can do it that way too. So that's how the linear interpolation process works. So you can get a, the idea is to try to use it a little bit more accurate from the table. Since the table doesn't go out to three decimal places, it helps you get a, a little bit more accuracy. It's a holdover from when the tables were the standard. Now that you've got calculators and computers, the interpolation idea is a little bit more dying. Sometimes you have to use it on the actuarial exam, which is the only reason why I even mention it. But you can get a little bit more accurate to do it that way. What was that? You don't have to do that, but you might have, you might have no uh, interpolation for engineering exam. They have a presentation exam for those. And they, engineers are very, very, very much about doing approximations. Uh-oh. <laughs> so interpolation is definitely something that could pop up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not right now, though. Can you do that numerical? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're interpolating. That's what we're doing. I feel like I know how to spell that. Interpolate is not hard to spell. It's not, it spells like sounds. I'm a math major, Dr. Joe. I'm not good with words. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. Words are really hard. All right. <laughs> is it okay with everybody? All right. So let's go on to new stuff. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. It's going to get harder, isn't it? What we're going to do, we're going to jump to the next, the next chapter. Oh, so it's not normal distribution? No. Man, I was good at that. It's a paranormal distribution, exactly. Is it really? <laughs> the nor well, yeah, because the picture, is, it's, a, it's a cartoon, so it draws this, and then it says normal distribution. And then it draws... Yeah. So there's your paranormal distribution. Um, wait, what does that say? Multi what? Multivariate. Multivariable? Multivariate. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think that's I thought I was trying to say that, but. Because, you know, I can't. Shins. Right yeah. 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 Yeah, the other one was the joke. That would be yesterday's joke. <laughs> uh, I know. We've put it on there before for all right. <laughs> 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 oh, I didn't even look. Sorry. A word? The multivariate. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Most of the <laughs> most of chapter four really deals with bivariate distributions, but the ideas that we're going to talk about <clears throat> extend. So. All right. So for discrete bivariate distributions, whoops. We get what we refer to as a joint PMF, so a joint probability mass function. And this gives us that the probability that an x equal, the x random variable equals a particular little x value and the y equals a particular little y value. So when you talk about a joint PMF, it automatically gives you the AND probability for X and Y. So we denote that, of course, with what you would think, F of X, Y. We usually use an F for our probability mass function. So we denote it like it's a function of two variables. But you can see how this could extend, right? You can have an X, Y, and a Z, and they have a function of three variables. Right? You can have an x1 through xn and make a function of n variables. Right? So when you do the definitions with two variables, so you can imagine that the, 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 the definitions would extend to as many variables as you'd want. Okay? What's wrong? Talk about the calculus. I, mean, uh, oh. I, I had to ask for help. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I got some like roots. Yeah. Yeah, negative one. Yeah. For the walk, yeah. I got that on the backpack. Maybe I didn't talk about that. I got five. No, I got two. I got two. Oh, I definitely, I just switched them. I did the front. I got two one zero. All right. This calculus interlude brought to you by Arby's. <laughs> All right. What properties do you think this uh, probability mass function has to have, do you think? It has to add up one. Okay. So if I take... If I add up all the, all the possibilities for all the X's and all the Y's, we should get one, right? So we get a double sum. Right? So if I take for all the X's and the support for X and all the Y's and the support for Y and add up the function, we better get one, right? Okay. What else do you think it has to, what other properties do you think it has to have? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can't be negative. <laughs> I agree. What else can't it be? Greater than one. Good. <laughs> Fantastic. We're on, a, we're on a roll. Good. So those are the big properties. And again, if we want to do, if our uh, A is a, sub, uh, is a subset. Oops. Is this another property? It, well, yeah. If. If A is a subset of the support, then the probability that a particular X, Y is in the, the subset, you're going to take the sum over all the X, Y's in the subset of the F of X, Y. Now, one of the things that can get tricky with the way I've written this sum here is that sometimes your support for one of the variables is in terms of the support for the other variable. So if I give you an example of that, let's see here. Here we go. So I didn't print these off today, so you'll just have to write down the problem, sorry. I'm not as don't work, don't write the whole problem down. Yeah, just write the 
the probability of mass function down. Because I want to tell you something about the way that the, the support is defined. Do you know y over 24x? Yeah, I could, yeah, y over 24x. I can zoom in on that a little bit. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. A little better? Okay. I meant to print these off and forgot. I hope it's okay because I didn't do it. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> It's out of a review manual. It's number two. Out of it's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be number two out of a review manual that I make copies of, and I'll hand out of the worksheet okay. on Monday. That I do not have on me right now. I just am wondering so I can like reference. Got it. Yep. 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 Is it actually number two, or did you just pull that? It says number two. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. It wasn't on the screen at that point. All right. I feel like that wasn't in there. That was the back. You already saw it. All right. So in particular for this, for this one, I want you to pay attention to this part. That's describing the support for the x's and the y's. So notice that the x can be one through one, two, and four. That's it. The y can be two, four, and eight. That's it. But we also have to have the x be less than or equal to the y. So for example, if y is 2, what can't x be? 4, right? So the only points that we have in the support, if I actually write out what the support has to look like, the supports, the support, the points that we have are 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 8, 2, 4, oops, oops, sorry. 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 8, but only 4, 4, and 4, 8 for the last one, right? Those are the only possible uh, possibilities for x's and y's and satisfy that condition in the support. That makes sense? Okay, so we could actually use this to check to make sure that we really do satisfy the probability, the property that f of x, y is a PMF, right? So if we plug all of these in we should and add it up, we should get one, correct? Do you want to see? <laughs> I, I trust this one. Disappointed that look. <laughs> <laughs> I may be a little bit pedantic, but I do want to go through it. <laughs> Sorry. All right, this is supposed to add up to one, right? We plug all these in. I just want to make sure we all have the appropriate practice of plugging these things in. Remember, the top is the Y, the bottom is the X on here, right? So f of 1, 2, I put 2 over 24, right? So it'll be a 12th. 4 over 24 gives a 6th. 8 over 24 gives a 3rd. We agree with those first three? Okay. Then we get 2 over 48, so that's a 24th. 4 over 48 is a 12th. 8 over 48 is a sixth. 4 over 96 is a 24th. And 4 over, or excuse me, 8 over 96 is a 12th. It didn't repeat, no, because we missed that. We didn't have that first one in there, right? Because All right, so what do we have? We've got, okay, a 24th and a 24th is a 12th plus three more twelfths is a third, 
And then you've got two sixths, which is a third, and a one third, which is a third. So we really do get one. Look at that. Uh, it's like math works it is wonderful how that works. All right. No. No. We haven't actually answered the problem yet. Uh, that's <laughs> no, I wasn't answering the problem. I was just, we're going to answer the problem here now. But I wanted to just go through and show a PMF and really do it to satisfy that particular property. But in particular, I also wanted to say that the support doesn't have to be rectangular necessarily. It's not as important in the discrete distributions, but when we get to continuous distributions, we're going to have regions that aren't rectangular. And you've noticed for calculating probabilities for discrete, discrete distributions, we have to do double sums. Well, what does sums turn it into when you do continuous distributions? Integrals. So we'll have to do double integrals set up over non square regions to do probabilities. So. <laughs> not to put too fine of a point on it. <laughs> it's not that bad. All right. So this says an insurance policy pays the full amount of X and half the amount for Y. It wants the total to be no more than five. Okay. All right. So of these points, how are we going to get the total to be no more than five if I use all of X and half of Y? Because right, it says it's going to pay. It's going to pay all of x and half of y, right? So which of these points represent less than five? If we're going to do all of x and half of y, all of them except for the ones on the outside, or like That's the true. bottom and the. Right the side. ones that have eight sets. The, no. the four, four, and the. Well, this one's eight. okay, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. No more oh, than yeah. five. Okay, so it's two eight. Four, that one's eight. okay. Two, eight, four, eight, four. One plus four is five. That's no more than five. You just can't use the last three. I'm so lost, right? Yeah, it's, it's half of what we're adding. We're, we're at, it says that it's going to pay the full amount of x and half of y. Yeah. <laughs> What's one plus four? <laughs> no, I'm saying that one plus four. Yes. <laughs> Can you use that one, right? We can still use this one. What about this one? No. No, because you get what? Six. Six. This one? No. Six. Six. This one? Eight. All right. The rest of them we can use, though, yeah? So, yep. All right. So, so we want the probability that x plus one half of y is less than or equal to five. So we can't use these three, correct? Those are the ones that we can't use, the ones that I just underlined? Okay. Uh, let's see, what is that together? That's four and two, uh, seven twenty-fourths. These, right? Four, six, seven twenty-fourths, yes? Okay. And those are the ones that we can't use. So what is it? What does this have to be? If this is seven twenty-fourths total. Seventeen. Seventeen over twenty-four. <laughs> I could have just added up the other ones too. But I use the, you can do the same thing with complements, right? Depending on if it's easier yeah, to compute or not. What's that? So that one took more work. Like yeah. Adding up the rest. yeah, adding up the rest would take up a little bit more work. <laughs> this one okay? Yeah. All right. Let's do another one. Uh, let's look at this one. Yep. Can I what? This oh. will be in our Rather than giving you an actual explicit function to plug numbers into, they just give you a table with function values and want you to use it. If you were to go through and add up every number in this table, what should you get? One. You better get one, right? 
But, you know, Grace gets mad when I actually add them all up, so I'm not going to do that. Mad. I just didn't want to do it. You weren't mad, you were, you were mad you were just disappointed. <laughs> I was even disappointed. I was just being lazy. Yeah. How many watermelons will Jim take to the picnic? <laughs> <laughs> Is it strictly buying more? It's going to say buy more apples than oranges, yeah. So you can't use the third column at all. Right, you can't use this column at all, I agree. It's like doing a stair step now. Yeah. Those? Is that what you're telling me? I agree with you. We'll make sure you buy more apples than oranges because, I don't know. Maybe oranges make you throw up. I don't know. That's what this graph is trying to tell you. What's that? Oranges are good, but I hate peeling. Uh, I, can't, I can't eat oranges. They make me sick. <laughs> I like them, I just can't eat them. <laughs> they make me sick. For some reason, I can see you. Yeah. I love apples, but I'm allergic to them, but I eat them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I like potatoes. I like potatoes, I like apples. So what are we going to do with all these numbers in here? Uh, Add them up? All right, so you got, what, 33, 44, is it 0.47? Yeah. Sure. That seems to be That was it. Yeah, that was all it was. No, no trick. I promise. No trick on that one. <laughs> I guess the trick was maybe on the table. That one was it. There's cyanide. Yes, I know. I know there is. I know there is. You think if you eat apple seeds, you'll actually immunize yourself against cyanide? All right. Let's do one that's continuous. <laughs> Are you gonna make Chowing a down apple seeds? I am gonna make you integrate it. Well, then we gotta go now. Got two minutes. I got four minutes. Uh, I got four minutes three. according to my watch. Four. <laughs> if we keep arguing with me. Actually, you have two minutes and 15 seconds. All right. Here's what I was mentioning about non square support, non rectangular support. So, are they both from zero to one now? Well, they, neither of them can get bigger than one, but it says the x always has to be less than or equal to the y, right? Or the y is greater than or greater than the x. So it's going to look like this region here, isn't it? Oh, we have to find k. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, nope. Sorry, that's the wrong region. Okay, It's this region. Is the opposite side. The y has to be bigger than the x. So it has to be above the line y equals x. But the, they're going to be the same probabilities, right? So we talk about mm, not necessarily because of this. I'm squaring the y. When I square when I square the bigger numbers, they'll be bigger. Yes. So this is the line y equals x, right? And it says the y is greater than the x, so I would have to shade above. And then I know that I have to stop here because neither of them can get bigger than one. Uh, because that would be the boundary for this condition right here. That's why. All right. So if we do the double integral here of our f of x, y, 
over all of our x, y's and our support, what do we have to get? One. We have to get one, right? Okay, so I need to take the double integral of our k x y squared, and I need bounds for my double integral here, or my iterated integral, I should say. So remember when you do inter uh, when you integrate using your iterated integrals, you have to make a choice for which direction you want to go, right? So do you want to hold the y constant integrate with respect to x first or hold the x constant integrate with respect to y first? What's the x? Let's do it this way. So which one's this doing first then? Zero to y. Yeah, it's doing the x first and then the y, right? And you're doing zero to y and then your y's go from zero to one. You could have also done x to one and then zero to one the other way around. Right? We need this equal to 1, correct? And if we go through this, integrating with respect to x first, you get x squared over 2. Got it. Right? So we get ky to the fourth over 2. I put the y in for the x and get y to the fourth there. <laughs> What'd you do wrong? I don't know. You should just split, try to split it in two. Oh, it's because uh, you have a variable. Yeah, you have a variable. You can't split it into two. You can't. Are you try? You try to take the integrals of your x's and your integrals of the y and multiply them together, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, I got that now, Dr. Joe. <laughs> because you don't have a rectangle. You don't have constants for both of your sets of integration. That's okay. That's okay. It's it's a good trick to use. You can use it, but you can't use it in this case. We did an integral because we wanted to. Yep. All right. We'll do more of this stuff next time. I'll get you a worksheet next time, too. Have a good weekend.